Good morning. Birthdays are fantastic, aren't they? The opportunity to have a party, a big celebration, hopefully presents as well, cake if you're a child, uh, all the delights of party food, jelly and ice cream, um, those um, iced ring biscuits. It's great fun, isn't it? Uh, we love to celebrate life. Uh, we love to rejoice with other people uh, and to say, this is good, this is exciting. We want to spend time together enjoying something good, something worth celebrating. It means that even uh, during coronavirus, people have had to find uh, new ways of, of celebrating. Uh, so uh, there have been online parties. I attended my first online Zoom birthday party for somebody's 60th a couple of weeks back. It was fantastic. We, uh, uh, we got to catch up with people. There was cake. Well, we got to see cake. Uh, some of us were able to pick up cake from uh, a collection point later on. Um, it was good. It wasn't the same as it would have been with a normal party. And I, I guess the person will probably want to do a fuller celebration later in the year when we can all be physically present. Uh, but it's still, it was lovely to spend time with people and to rejoice in something good. Because we want to celebrate something joyful and happy, uh, Christians often refer to uh, the time when they put their trust in Jesus as like a birthday. Now that comes from uh, John's Gospel, uh, John chapter 3. Jesus meets a, a man called Nicodemus and Nicodemus has got all sorts of questions about how he can know God and have peace with God. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus is like, what on earth are you talking about? Do I have to return into my mother's womb? If I adopt the fetal position, will I sort of get sucked in, become a fetus again? And that's crazy talk, Jesus. What are you on about? Uh, and Jesus is, he's, his response is, <laughs> come on, Nicodemus. You, you know, don't be a, a literalist in this silly, naive way. You're meant to be a clever bloke. Do you not know what I'm getting at here? Uh, that God offers new life. We are born into a world of sin. We live sinful lives. We hurt other people. We fail to love God uh, with our whole heart. We, love to, we fail to love our neighbours ourselves. We end up being selfish and bitter. But we join in the causes that mess up this world and cause pain and suffering. You need new life. You need God to completely change you, to forgive the past, uh, to bring you safe into his family with a new identity, a new status as righteous. And that's what the good news is all about, how we can be set free from our habits, our temptations, our shame, all the things that make us feel guilty, uh, that make us uh, aware of our failings that cause us to feel shame. And that's what the Christian gospel is, is all about. Uh, now, I know lots of people who have these ex amazing stories of life's turned around, uh, drug addicts that are set free from drugs, people that were in prison and they find faith in Christ and their life is turned around. Uh, I have met people who don't have that kind of story, uh, but were caught up in another type of addiction, addiction to money and materialism, and they, they found no happiness. Uh, they earned their millions, they lost their millions, they earned their millions again. They got the Jaguars, they got the the big houses with the swimming pools, and still those things don't give peace with God. But they found peace with God when they put their trust in Jesus and were born again, had their second birthday, their new birthday. My story is not like that. My parents were Christians. That, that meant that I grew up in a, a Christian home. I, I went to church, to Sunday school every week. Um, 
And so I was not on a downward trajectory into drugs and sex and alcohol. I didn't end up in prison, nor did I have a, a particular temptation towards um, towards getting rich, not being a, a big issue. That those, those things obviously weren't there, not least because I was about four or five years old. Um, but the risk, I think, for somebody brought up going to church is that we, we begin to think, I'm okay uh, because my parents uh, are Christians. Uh, because I go to church, because I've learned to say my prayers, uh, because although sometimes I might be a, a bit naughty and get told off by my parents and made to stand in the, the corner or whatever punishment uh, you experienced, uh, basically I'm, I'm okay. I went to Sunday school, I, I knew that Jesus was good and there was something about Jesus that I loved. Uh, I liked to pray. But those things were not going to be enough. I learned all the right answers. Um, I knew how to uh, answer all the Bible questions. I learned to memorise Bible verses. I learned the books of the Bible. But those are not the things that give you eternal life. Those are not the things that give you real peace with God. You see, the Bible says that all of us are, are sinners. The crucial point for me was one Sunday, 40 years ago. I was only five years old, so definitely not heading off to prison or uh, into alcohol or any of those temptations. Fairly obvious, isn't it? Um, I was heading into a life of self-righteousness and I was took along to a Sunday evening service with my sister, uh, one of her Sunday school teachers, a lady called Mrs Parker, but she uh, remarried, she was a, a, wi a widow, she remarried and later became known as Mrs Taylor. Uh, she was one of my sister's Sunday school teachers, knew her well in the church and uh, she t shared her testimony about her trust in Jesus and the pastor preached we sang songs that talked about the good news about Jesus and then at the end of the service the the practice in the church was to say that if anybody wanted to invite Jesus to be their Lord and Saviour that they could go to the front and somebody would be there to pray with them uh, my, my sister uh, was shy um, she was seven years old, uh, she wanted to respond so grabbed my mum's hand and went down to the the front and put her trust in Jesus. Now, I was sat uh, with my dad, I guess about five or six rows back in this auditorium and I asked my dad what, what, what my sister was doing and he explained to me that you can't inherit faith, you can't um, rely on being a nice person, um, trying to do good things, going to church, you need a personal relationship with Jesus. And to ask him to come into your life through his Holy Spirit to take charge of your life, to forgive you for your sin because of his death on the cross and resurrection. And so I said to my dad, well, do I, I need that. I want that. Do I need to go to the front uh, like my sister has? And my dad said, no, you don't. You know, we can talk to God anywhere. And so there uh, with my dad uh, in a seat in the, in the church building, I put my trust in Jesus with the simplest of prayers. I simply prayed, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I love you. I ask you to forgive me, come into my life, take away my sin and be with me forever. Amen.
And Jesus has kept that promise. In many ways, it was the start of the journey, uh, that challenge towards self-righteousness, towards uh, enjoying the ability to know things intellectually, and even to argue with my teachers about evolution and things like that, um, whilst falling into temptation, not, not those big things, uh, but to allow my language to become distasteful, to allow my thought life to become messed up. Those challenges were there. And I've learnt throughout that the solution, that the response to those things is to come back to the gospel, that Jesus loves me, that Jesus chose to love me before I loved him. And that Jesus has died for all of my sin, past, present and future, and brought me forgiveness. And that's my story. Um, we're going to hear Sarah's story later on, very different. Um, I would really love you to have the opportunity to know what it means to be born again, to have this additional birthday, more importantly than, than any kind of sort of day celebration, to have joy in your life that comes from peace with God. Uh, so what I'm encouraging people to do at the moment is to join in with our uh, First Look course. We're providing it on faithroot.com. You can go to the page, I'll put links in so you can find them uh, and follow that course. So if you want to talk through the discussion questions uh, with me or with a friend in the church, we'd love to do that. Uh, we would love at the end of it for you to be able to say, I've put my trust in Jesus. I have new life. I've been born again. Thank you for listening.